Val Britt, which is a firm with big firm lawyers in a small firm setting. Uh, if you are a large retailer or service provider or transportation company, what separates you from your customers carrying one of these devices are layers of proprietary carrier networks, applications, and operating systems. Scott Suey is here to tell us how Point About cuts through this clutter and makes these connections. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it, sir. All right. So the best thing about going fifth is you're the guy everybody remembers, right? Okay, I'm the CEO of Point About. We're a mobile applications company located in Washington, D.C. Um, let me introduce you to my team first of all. I came from 16 years at Microsoft. I spent the last five of them as a general manager of business development, helping build Microsoft's public sector organization. Daniel Odio came from GE. He spent many years bootstrapping companies. He's an amazing sales guy and really understands the art of a bootstrap. Sean Shadman spent the last several years in Silicon Valley and uh, just recently launched tag.com and right after that launched his own company, tasteful.com, with our chief architect, Isaac. Isaac, before Tasteful, was actually um, an architect at XM Radio. The team has enterprise experience, it has startup experience, and it's deep technically. The enterprise experience you're going to see really matters because of who our customers are. So you have to ask yourself how we got into this. The first thing we did is we actually went and talked to a lot of our friends. We went and talked to people like the CMO, the Chief Marketing Officer of Walmart, Stephen Quinn, and said, what do you see as the next several years of technology from an enterprise perspective? Then we went and actually got a group of MBAs from Georgetown. We spent six, we got six MBAs, spent a month and a half doing focus groups with different people out there to figure out what the enterprise looked like from a technology perspective. We found that the most interesting place was this intersection between mobility and location. It's been around forever, but two things have happened that's going to really take this, make this take off, and it's already taken off, and you can see it. The first thing was Apple came out with the iPhone. I don't know if you've been following it, but it's just an amazing success story from an application perspective. Primarily, they're putting a free GPS in every phone. That really changes the game on LBS. The second thing is, you're going to see by the end of the month, Google's coming out with T-Mobile and Android. That's really going to take the market in a whole completely different direction. But you can really see the opportunity here still. There's a lot of people out there getting people to the location. Right? That's, that's one piece of it. You know, you can find the metros via any vehicle, but what do you do once you get there? What we're focused on is figuring out how to help the metro or Walmart or any of those companies, once you get to that location, communicate with that organization. That's the real delta that hasn't been cracked yet. So once you find the metro, you got to find what the next train that's leaving. This is a, a metro site that already exists today that we location enabled. And then the location-based ad that we've been talking about forever. This right here is an ergonomic problem. It's not necessarily a technical problem. There's many people that can do this today. It's more of an ergonomic problem. So why has it been so hard? I don't know if any of you have been ever dealt with carrier they're very difficult to deal with. The U.S. carrier market, they call it the walled garden for a reason. A metro organization can't deal with these carriers. They really can't deal with all the handsets that these carriers have, and they really can't deal with all the different operating systems and different versions of operating systems that these carriers have. To get location data off of that, it's very difficult. For instance, to get cell ID information off of a Windows mobile device that's on an HTC hardware is much different than getting that same information off a Motorola device running in the same operating system. That's the value proposition that our company deals with. We encapsulate that for companies and organizations like the Metro or Walmart to be able to communicate with their customer based on where that customer is. So how do we do it? We create a location-based browser. We put that browser on phones. We first launched on the iPhone. In the next few weeks, we're going to actually have our BlackBerry version out for all Blackberries that have uh, location ability and full browser aware. Our first customer was Long & Foster. Think about this. Long & Foster can now 
take their current infrastructure that they've spent $10 million on, their current web infrastructure that you can find homes on. Now bring it to the web so if I'm standing somewhere in a if I'm a realtor and I have a couple clients and I'm taking them out, they don't like the house we're in, but they want to see what else is around in the neighborhood, the realtor doesn't have to call back to the office to find those homes. They can actually look around and see what homes are available. Not only that, future long and foster customers can actually get access to that. You see the call here, and uh, this can actually drive net new leads to Long & Foster, which they're extremely excited about. We're taking this template that we've built to the Coldwell bankers of the world, to the Remaxes of the world, and then to all the small real estate firms in the world. This is just one example of a template you can build on a location-based system. The second one we're doing is transportation. We actually have this built. We're, act we're actively figuring out how to do it in D.C., working with WMATA, and we're going to be taking it to New York, Boston, and anybody else that has a bus system. We're also location-enabling ATMs for different banks. We've got a CRM system that we're working on. We've got an alerting system that we're working on that you're going to see here in a, in a bit. And then the one I'm most excited about is the retail one. How many of you in the audience have ever been to a Home Depot and you can't find that person with the orange jersey? It happens to me all the time, right? Well now, if you're near a Home Depot or in a Home Depot and you want to collaborate with that Home Depot store, we give you the ability to do that. This is something we're partnering with somebody here in the local area to try to figure out. Now, once you get on the phone, once you're starting to use this application, if you look at that little target there in our browser, that is what we call the point about button. That point about button actually takes you to a gallery of 70 plus applications that we've already location enabled. Those 70 plus applications, we're adding about 10 a week. So by the time uh, you see this in a, in a few months, we'll have hundreds of uh, applications out there. So the first thing you might ask is, how do you make money? Well, this next year is entirely driven by how many of these enterprise brands we can close. Enterprise licensing deals. We're doing licensing for one year at a time. We have a usage model that you pay by the number of uniques. And then, as we get this right, as we get 40 to 60 customers locked on, the first thing we do is move to our phase two, which is our analytics and advertising program, to bring that ergonomic piece of advertising that we talked about before. And I'll show you what that looks like here in the next slide. So where are we today from a milestone perspective? We launched the company just a few short months ago. We got incorporated. Uh, we put the springboard on the iPhone. Uh, we uh, actually got to the Apple App Store. I'm proud to announce that last night we got approval on the App Store. Anybody that's been through that process knows how consuming it can be. So last night we actually uh, were notified that we're approved. We've closed our first uh, customer, Long & Foster. We've closed our first partnership with Alerts.com. Now, what does the future look like? We have a pipeline of hundreds of customers. We're talking to these customers here that you see up there. We plan on closing deals with each and every one of them. They love what we're doing. It's just now figuring out what the arrangement is with each one of them. That's what we're focused on this entire next year. And the second thing from a technology perspective after the BlackBerry launches in the next few weeks, we have to get Android done and we have to get Windows Mobile done. So what does it look like after that? What does phase two look like? Once we have these applications stood up, think about the advertisements that you can get once the user profile and the location come in. So this is an example of a Quiznos ad. It's a CPM type ad on top of the Metro site that we're building. Now here is where our intellectual property is. This is a, a pay-per-visit type of, of deal where we actually pay some, we get paid based on bringing somebody into the store. So the next question that happens is your competition. Now, everybody's been pitched on location-based services companies. The inflection point change, though, is what Apple and Google are about to do is make that a commodity. Getting to the Walmart, getting to the Home Depot, all those things, that's a commodity as it is. What we're doing is taking it the next step. We're using the APIs and the frameworks to start collaborating once you get there. And there's only a handful of companies trying to do this. Loki, the Skyhook project, is the closest one to this market that's actually doing something, and they're well funded. Right now, we're ahead of what Loki's doing. So we're pretty, pretty happy about our position. From a use of funds perspective, we are going to be profitable without money this year. And, and so you see that we've got a run rate of about 40,000 a month. With an angel investment of about 500k, we think we can get that up to 80,000 a month, and with a venture round, we think we can get it up to 120,000 a month. Basically, what it does is it reduces our agile development cycle and increases our service and marketing. 
We plan on having 900,000 in the bank, 100,000 in the bank, and 900,000 in revenue. 65 customers, 120,000 users. With the investment in cash, we think we can really take this off. We don't plan on building a small company here. We plan on building a huge company, a technology company on the East Coast. If you want to talk to us about it, ScottSueyPointAbout.com. Thank you. For, for questions, I want to introduce our, our, um, our chief visionary here. Sean, can you come up here with me? This is the guy that's behind everything that we've done here, and I want to make sure that he's up on stage uh, for this as well. Sir? Yeah, thank you. We're going to let Sweeney kick off. I'm surprised to not see Silo on your competitor list. I think they were doing something in this space. If not, are you guys trying to partner with them as well? Well, the interesting thing that with most of these competitors is we can actually utilize their location technology. For instance, if Fire Eagle is on the device, we can actually leverage Fire Eagle. If Skyhook's on the device, we can leverage Skyhook. There are hundreds of companies out there that are trying to do the commodity side of this. What we're trying to do is actually the API side of it to com communicate with the back end to help the Walmarts communicate with you once somebody brings you to them. We'll be doing location-based search as well, but we're focused on the back end, remember. Okay, thank you. Sides, would you like to ask a question? So as you think about your revenue model, you talked about the license business and then the ad business. How do you see those two sort of revenue streams uh, you know, evolving, shaping? Um, is, is advertising sort of thing? piece in 2012 or so, those two pieces? Yeah, the, when it, when, in 2012, enterprise licensing will be about half of our business and advertising will be about half of our business. As we move forward, the advertising play becomes much more interesting because we can do analytics, we can do paper visit, we can do multiple types of advertising. What Walmart's asking us to do right now is figure out how to bring people into their store on Halo Day. You know, they do game day at, at Walmart's and they want to bring gamers into their stores and they want to pay us for everybody we bring into one of their stores that's a gamer and actually buys something. And so we're trying to figure out what that relationship looks like. When we have that figured out, that could be extremely lucrative for us. Okay, thank you. Do you have any questions from the audience? I have a question. Would you like to ask a question? Uh, sure. Uh, we've before. Um, question on, on your enterprise pricing. It seems like the, the prices you're talking about, 50K, etc., are on the low end for such a strategic application. If you're really mobilizing content for Long and Foster or, or all the way up to Walmart, you know, 50K seems like yeah. a pilot. Yeah, you're going to more than like, well, you got to remember the usage side of it as well. So for a Long and Foster, it would probably be more like 100000 a year, given the usage that's occurring on it as well. But you'll probably see as we learn the market and what people are willing to pay, that that pricing changes. It's a place for us to start. And we think we can build a profitable company based on those prices. Thank you. Any more questions from the audience? Well, we certainly had an outstanding group of companies today. And we've actually met our goal. Journey on time. All the presenting companies will be available. Their tables out in the lobby, so you're welcome to stop out there for some coffee and ask some further questions. You can contact them. I want to remind everybody about the agenda in your book for the boot camp and for the second innovation showcase coming up in the I encourage you to register for those and we look forward to seeing you at the next Grub Stage.